Welcome to a new update and today it's Altcoin Saturday. So we're going to discuss everything that's happening in the altcoin markets as today and actually this entire week. It has been great when it comes to the altcoins. There has been some fundamental news as well. We're going to cover that in the update. We're discussing the Shanghai upgrade. We're going to discuss FTX as there might be some news on that part as well. We're going to have an overview of the markets as Bitcoin dominance has been dropping. And we're going to look at my altcoin portfolio as right now my altcoin portfolio is up 10% and we have made a new trade on it. If you want to stay tuned on everything that I'm doing, real-time updates, you will have to join my public Discord as there I'm posting everything. In this update, I'm weekly updating the altcoin portfolio, including the strategy. But in the Discord, I'm doing real-time updates. Also, as you might know, the schedule is different. On Tuesday, we do Bitcoin Tuesday. A few overview on other news related to Bitcoin and my TA. And also my projections for the coming period. Also on Thursday, we've got Macro Thursday. This Thursday, we discussed CPI. And now we've got the altcoin update. And finally, we are releasing our course within approximately six to eight weeks from now. Make sure to whitelist yourself in the description beneath. You can win one for free. It is an all around crypto course level one between six to eight hours of content. And I think it will be helping you a lot. Now, when we're looking at the altcoin portfolio, we first have to manage the entire case that we started beginning in January with a thousand bucks. So we're down a little as right now the standings are that we are approximately reaching 900 bucks. Next to me, you will see that we've started with Chainlink at 250 bucks, Atom at $200, Curve at $150, Reserve Rights at $100. Looks at $200 and also Axie Infinity at $100. Then we can see that the current standings are the chain link at 225.74, Atom at 174.75, Looks at 118.28, Curve at 148, RSR at 102, uh, Axie Infinity at 86, and USDT $42.69. I didn't really mean to have that number. There needs to be a zero in between, but uh, that's when something happens, then you get that number, right? So what did happen? Uh, we've made a switch and we're going to discuss that later in this update for the people watching and have been uh, have a quick eye. You can see that I've been swapping positions. Um, overall, a few positions are in profit. Chainlink is in profit. Um, RSR is in profit and the rest is still in the minus. So we're going to discuss that later on. Uh, my goal is to reach 10k during the year and to show you how I'm trading with lots of different chapters within it. So for now, the core focus is on holding the positions and we're going to rebalance the portfolio as much as we can to maximize. And along the way, we start to reshuffle the portfolio a little bit more towards a portfolio that has less risk because at this point, the risk is substantially high when it comes to the portfolio, as you might understand with these altcoins. But along the way, we will be doing that. We will also be covering hatching and we're just showing you what we do in our platform with this portfolio. And I hope you are enjoying it. But before we're going to continue with everything related to the altcoins, we are going to discuss the important news events. If we are discussing the important events of this week, we definitely need to include Ethereum Shanghai or Chapella Hard Fork, as we would call it. Before we're going to do that, we need to look at FTX. FTX has been um, the market mover of the past year as the collapse of FTX was probably already priced in since the collapse of Luna. As since then, the markets have not been recovering at all. But since the collapse of FTX, prices have been rallying. For instance, Ethereum ran from 800 bucks to now 2.1K. Bitcoin is up 2X from 15K to 30K. And now during this week, we've got some news from FTX and not from FTX alone, but from the lawyers surrounding FTX. And the title is Bankrupt Crypto Exchange FTX has recovered 7.3 billion in assets. Now you would say, okay, that was also what I tweeted initially. If they recover 7.3 billion all of a sudden and something is wrong, especially if it is six months after the collapse of FTX. But then uh, the news is a little bit different than that, but the headlines are quite clear. 
The news is as follows. Bankrupt crypto exchange FTX has recovered over 7.3 billion in cash and liquid crypto assets. I think it's actually illiquid crypto assets. An increase of more than 800 million since January, the company's attorney said on Wednesday at US bankruptcy uh, court hearing in Delaware. So the entire assets that they have have been rallying still they have a big gap as clients are currently unaware of the the big gap that they have and some clients or actually a large bunch of clients still need to get money from ftx including myself but what it shows is that there has been recovered about 7.3 billion in assets and the fact that it is, has been more than what it has been in january is because of the markets the markets have been rallying up so the assets from ftx are going to increase as well which is good for people that still need to get money from ftx um, it increases the chances of you getting the money back from ftx but it will probably take years and we also know that from mount gox mount gox still takes time it's already 10 years after the collapse of mount gox so it will take time, uh, but at some point you'll probably get something on the dollar back. Well, the attorney Andy Dietrich said the company is starting to think about its future after months of efforts devoted to collecting resources and figuring out what went wrong under the leadership of indicted ex-founder Sam Bankman-Fried. Bankman-Fried has pleaded not guilty. He said the situation has stabilized and the dumpster fire is out. And then he mentions that also the fact that they are currently recovering 7.3 billion is basically due to the fact that prices have been rallying since the collapse, um, which means that people are going to get more money on the dollar back. But then they want to restart the exchange, uh, which is a little bit of a fairy tale. But if they restart the exchange, it might be meaning that clients get their money back. We recall from Bitfinex, there was something taking place there too, and then you got a token to recover your own assets. So that is an option at this point. Um, overall, it's good for the markets and for everyone involved that there is more money in. But then what did we see? We did see FTT rallying. And probably also Solana and Serum are going to rally, which are connected with FTX. But FTT rallied with, uh, rallied with about 120% on one day. Be aware that if you are investing into FTT, that you're taking the ultimate risky approach here. Um, FTX isn't relaunching yet. And even if they are relaunching, probably due to regulations, they are not going to use FTT as at all. So the risk you take with that trade is significant. If you want to day trade, of course, that's completely fine. I would advise to not hit FTT at all because it doesn't reach my own standards of investing and trading into crypto. And I think that with the current standings of the markets, there are way better opportunities. But it's good for clients that FTX is currently recovering more as the markets are going up. Then the other big event of this week is Ethereum Shanghai upgrade, uh, which is also called as Chapella hard fork, as a hard fork is required to actually get the upgrade done. So what is the Shanghai upgrade? Essentially, it's the final part of the proof of work to proof of stake switch. Um, initially, Ethereum was proof of work, but then we had the gas fees and not scalability. Uh, there was no no um, solution for scalability issues. Now we are back to proof, or now we are to proof of stake, which means that there is a scalability solution and that Ethereum can actually be used. So I mentioned earlier, the entire swap towards as proof of stake is probably going to benefit the markets even more. Although there is also a regulatory framework because now you get money on the dollar every time you stake Ethereum, and that could be a security according to the U.S. law. However, prior to this event. People were expecting a big dump, and it's very comparable to Mount Gox release. Ethereum Shanghai upgrade, um, there are a few steps. So the previous merge took place in September 2022. And since then, stakers were not able to withdraw their Ethereum, which means that due to the unlock or due to the upgrade to Shanghai, stakers are actually able to unlock their Ethereum to unstake and to sell their Ethereum. What I, however, because of the fact that there is now a liquid staking solution, 
new investors find an argument to actually stake their Ethereum, have limit risk and to hold their position. So instead of being bearish on the event, it's actually a bullish event. Next, you can also argument the people that have been investing into Ethereum and have been staking their Ether at, I guess it was like 1200, 1300 bucks. If they have been staking their Ethereum and they couldn't be selling at all, why would they want to sell right now? It's not the group of people that want to speculate. It's a group of people that believe in Ethereum's future. And actually what they most likely are going to do is that what they get out of the, the staking or as a reward for staking Ethereum, they probably are going to restake. So now the um, upgrade took place, which is known as Chappella. It was triggered at 2227 UTC and the network is now processing withdrawal requests. Ethereum Shanghai hard fork has been finalized, enabling, as I mentioned, withdrawals for users who have staked their Ether to secure and validate transactions. Roughly half an hour after the Shanghai upgrade was activated, some 285 withdrawals in April 194.408 has been processed for about 5,400 ETH, which is approximately 10 million and not the 350 million people were finding as a potential argument. Then we go further. It's now a proof of stake. Of course, um, the blockchain has left behind its original proof of work consensus mechanism, the same one the Bitcoin uses. But until now, users have been unable to withdraw the staked ether to redeem accrued rewards, a crucial feature of the new paradigm. So, la final part I want to mention on this topic is that uh, Vitalik Buterin said that we are in a stage where the hardest and fastest parts of the Ethereum protocols transition are basically over. Very significant things still need to be done, but those very significant things can be safely done at a slower pace. Buterin said that scaling, making transactions faster and cheaper, will be the next issue that the blockchain tackles after Shanghai. So there are still a few steps to make, but we're getting there. If we don't fix scaling before the next border, we know that people are going to be stuck paying $500 transactions. If on the other hand, we don't have vertical trees before the next bull run, well, things might might suck, but you know, it's a much smaller problem than, you know, $500 transactions, right? So those are a few more steps, steps sharding, for instance. Um, but the fact that he states that the hardest and fastest parts of the Ethereum protocol transition are basically over is a good thing. Now we can finally start building on Ethereum, which we initially did as well, but developers were struggling because the fees are so high. So now there is an ecosystem in perspective that we can all start building on. So it's actually a bullish outcome. And what, else, what should we expect from the markets? Let's head over towards the altcoin overview in which I first want to discuss why this event is not a bearish outcome for the markets, as we can also see in the news and why prices are actually rallying up. So now the altcoin portfolio, the altcoin portfolio is still down 10% as we know from the fact that we have been starting it earlier and the markets have been correcting since. You could argue that the entries have not been going right, but I stated at the first video, which you can find on my, on my channel, that I want to build the portfolio in a way that I take additional risk. I bought at one point and I'm just going to hold and then we show how we are going to improve from there and take the maximum out of my portfolio. So I've swapped one position and the fact that I'm doing that is because in the current phase, and I've just mentioned that I think that the markets are going to continue moving for now, is that I want to rebalance the portfolio to compound my profits, which means that compounding your profits makes your portfolio go into an exponential curve. And in the end, if you want to reach 10K, you probably have to. And the, the further you get in that exponential curve, or the further you get into a cycle or an upwards run, you have to rebalance your portfolio again. Which means that for now we are positioned and I've been sharing to you which positions I have and next we will be discussing all the charts, including the trade that I've been doing. Next is that we're going to rebalance the portfolio and take the max out of it. The further we get into the cycle, I'm going to rebalance even more and show you how I'm going to do that. But overall, I want to trade on the higher time frames as it's a swing trade altcoin portfolio and it's not a day trade portfolio. Day trade portfolio I do have, but that's in the premium membership. So that's a little bit of an intro. Now let's discuss what position I've been swapping. So you see what position I had and why I've swapped. And let's see what the charts are saying towards us. 
If we want to discuss the markets, as I just said, first we need to look at ETH against Bitcoin. And as you can see in the chart, I've marked one important level, and that is the date of the merge, which was in September of 2022. And during that period, we actually managed to get a phase of rally, right? So there was a lot of hype around the merge, resulting into people buying the rumor selling the news as during the merge we had a pretty substantial sell-off and since the merge ethereum has been correcting heavily or at least it has been correcting by approximately 25 to 30 percent resulting into a case where ether has been bouncing at 0 0.062 um, against bitcoin and in this case right now as a result we can see that we're bouncing quite firmly as instead of a buy the rumor sell the news event we are actually having a sell the new uh, sell the rumor buy the news event so it's actually the opposite and therefore people are having a lot of fear going into the event resulting into a lot of relief after the event and the markets are going back to equilibrium there's another important one here and that is the fact that we are seeing older altcoins moving along too if we're looking at the bitcoin pass which is pricing the asset against bitcoin so for instance chainlink is priced against bitcoin since this period in september we've also been trending down on chainlink if we look at some more atom for instance has also been trending down since september in 2022 so most of the altcoins and i can show you even more but most of the altcoins are going in tandem here it is since august but has been trending down they are going in tandem with ether so if ether is start has starts to pick up other altcoins will follow along this means that Bitcoin broke out, Ethereum did go well in terms of the Shanghai upgrade. There's no fear at this point. There is a vacuum that we can actually continue to rally. So altcoins have uh, more space or relief to go to as there is more confidence in the markets as Ethereum went well and Bitcoin is doing well. That means that we can see continuation on the altcoins and that we currently have a small window that those altcoins are going to do well. Arbitrum made a new high, for instance. Other altcoins are going to uh, are running at this point. AI is probably going to have another hype run at this stage. But it starts with the fact that Ethereum against Bitcoin, as we can see on the screen, is doing well. Ethereum against Bitcoin broke to the upside, still trending down. But it's just a matter of time before we start to break up again. Um, and that will result into a certain impulse move for approximately one to three months. That's what we're looking at here. If we're looking at the Bitcoin dominance, we can arguably say that we have been reaching the crucial level at 50. I've been marking it here. I was thinking maybe we can go a little bit higher, but then I realized that Shanghai upgrade took place, which I, I didn't include in the previous update. I think that we are on the edge of having a correction on the Bitcoin dominance. I think that we are peaking here and that is going to result into a fall in the coming period. Um, as the last time during Ethereum hard, uh, during the Ethereum merge, it was the bottom. Now it's probably the peak. So we have a window of at least a few months that we're going to do well when it comes to the altcoins before Bitcoin is going to correct. Which means that I'm not inducing shorting at all. I think buying a dip and longing is the way to go. Um, total crypto market cap. We have been men men uh, mentioning this before. Um, I need to include the 100 and 200 EMAs here. Currently, we are seeing that we are back above the 200 EMA and 200 MA, which is a result of continuation of strength. We have been doing that here too, consolidating around these two, breakout consolidation, another rally. Right now, we are facing a crucial resistance, and most likely with this weekly candle, we are going to conclude that we are breaking above, resulting into a rally towards 2 trillion as there is most likely more continuation to come. Importantly, altcoins finally following the path. We are making higher lows here. And additionally to that, we are still above the 200 MA and 200 EMA as well. We've got this weekly bullish divergence at the previous all time high, which is a result of a potential bottoming feature. So this weekly bullish divergence is usually an argument from to go long on your positions and then stick to it until the weekly or daily timeframes provide a bearish divergence into higher time frame resistance. In this case, we're currently facing that final resistance, but it looks quite clear that with a little bit more of consolidation, we are continuing the rally 
and could be seeing a run of 2x on the total market cap excluding Bitcoin, which means that Ether, for instance, can continue this entire rally as we see the exact same on the higher time frames. And I'll just erase the EMAs here. That we continue this rally for Ether unless uh, up to around 3 to 4K. So if we get towards 3K with Ether, um, especially since all those fundamental growth and aspects have been taken into account, that is up 50%, but most likely other smaller altcoins are going to start rallying the further we get into the cycle because there's more confidence. Altcoins have a very parabolic move. Um, so this move of Ethereum is definitely granting more space for the altcoins. And I think Ether can continue towards 3K. Now, what am I going to do with the portfolio? That's what we'll be discussing next. Here you can see the overview of the portfolio and today is a good day as we are up 45 bucks. But you can see that currently we are having different numbers as UCT has $42 and Chainlink has been reduced. Which means that the Chainlink portfolio is at 226 depending on the market movements at that certain point in time. We are trading this on BitGet as all the pairs that I want to buy are on BitGet as well and it's our, BitGet is our partner. So when we're looking at the markets, this is the portfolio right now and it's just a matter of time before we swap back into 1k plus. Now when we look at spot trading and we go towards the positions, I'll show you what, the mar what I've been doing. Chainlink used to be at 270 bucks, however, um, that is approximately 30%. That doesn't mean that I'm currently seeing that Chainlink is going to correct or whatever, but given that I've just mentioned that Ethereum is breaking out and Chainlink is following suit, other altcoins will follow suit, I think that swapping towards smaller altcoins at this stage is going to increase my ROI, which means that I've swapped a little bit from Chainlink towards uh, Lux, and I'll show you in a little bit, through which I can induce a higher ROI. That is my rebalancing for now, as $217 off 900 into one asset has been a little bit too high. Lux has been the one that has been failing the most when it comes to the ROI, and therefore it grants an opportunity, as most likely it will pick up when the markets are going to pick up. So here the order history. You can see that I've executed five and a half chain link for average at $7.83, price is around that level. If it continues to rally, I'm quite satisfied, fine. Um, at some point I can take profits again. Uh, but this is around $42. And then when we go towards looks, you can see that I'm currently having an order on looks and the chart looks ready for a new bull cycle like we have been seeing here previously. I think this time we go higher though. Um, looks I've got the position here of 739 and I've got a buy order at 15 and a half cents for 275 looks lesson here we've had this breakout um, ultimately the best case is that we retest 15 cents but usually when we start to break out you don't get the optimal retest taking place uh, hence why I'm a little bit more aggressive and I'm looking for the retest here at 15 and a half which is a little bit lower than the current prices but I definitely don't want to chase the trades. So I'm rebalancing right now, but that doesn't mean that I'm just taking the trade um, based on the price action after such a candle. I'll just look for a retest. Now, when we're looking at uh, the markets itself, this is Chainlink against UCT. The markets are still looking for continuation. So I still believe that at this point, this entire range is finally eager for a breakout for Chainlink. And why is that? That is based on the fact that we've got Chainlink against Bitcoin here. And if we look at the daily time frame, we can see that we've got a bullish divergence, which is quite big. This bullish divergence implies that at least we are going to go towards 3000 sets, which means that at least 20 to 40% in Bitcoin I can make out of this position. This also means that if Chainlink continues this momentum, and for right now we are, uh, we are trying to break this range high, I might be trading this position on the 4 hour and daily time frame with support resistance levels. So the first TP, if we continue to rally, is around 9 bucks. If we get there on the daily time frame, I think I might be reshuffling again if, for instance, the other altcoins are not moving along. But however, I mentioned before, my TP on Chainlink is around 16 bucks because I think that this entire swing rally is going to lead to Chainlink going to 16 bucks, perhaps even $20. So in the meantime, during that run, I want to maximize my profits. I'm definitely 
not looking too short at this case. But hey, we've got the first slight run. The allocation of Chainlink is a little bit on the high ground at this point. Hence why I've swapped a little towards Lux, which is the lowest performer, I would say. And Lux is ready for a new cycle too. Um, essentially, the Bitcoin pair it doesn't have, but it is currently showing. Uh, there we go. Um, that the UCT pair is again on the range lows. As I mentioned previously, range lows are usually a good time to start buying. And I think that it's on the edge of a breakout just like most of the positions we have. RSR is another one, it's a smaller one. I had some retests here, currently grinding up. Um, I take profit for this and for the other positions are quite clear. You first want to look at a new higher high for the position and then you're looking at 6.8, um, 6,800 and that's where you want to start taking profit. So very simple for the altcoin portfolio. I still have my positions, the portfolio is still down. But I have shuffled my a part of Chainlink towards Luke's to maximize my profits. The further we get into the cycle, the tighter my stop loss will be. The more take profits I will take. Oh, about take profits, I want to flip the trades during the cycle based on the daily time frames and the four hour time frames. Um, and along the way, further we get into the cycle, the more I want to start hedging or at least de-risking my portfolio to defend my portfolio. That's the update for the altcoin portfolio. Let's finalize this update with the outro. I hope you have been enjoying the update today. We have discussed Ethereum, we have discussed FTX, we have been discussing the entire altcoin overview and we have been focusing on my portfolio. The portfolio is doing well and if you want to stay tuned on it, make sure to join my public discord. If you want to know more about the entire crypto ecosystem and learn how everything moves, make sure to whitelist yourself for the course. And also, if you want to get more trade IDs, get more from my other portfolios, make sure to join our premium membership, which is 99 bucks per month and can be found in the description beneath. Hit like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, make sure to share this to your friends, and I'll see you again on Tuesday with the Bitcoin update. Ciao.